Hello all, welcome back. In the previous two lectures, we were talking about Reynolds transport theorem and deriving the conservation equations that is mass, momentum and energy equations using Reynolds transport theorem. So, today we will do some of the numerical examples for understanding the mass balance concept. So, we will start with one example. The question is the average rate of inflow and outflow in a lake having an area of 20 kilometer square are 2.7 and 3 meter cube per second in a year. The lake is experiencing a rainfall of 1200 millimeter in that year. Determine the evaporation from that lake. Any other losses can be neglected. The question is that we are having a lake, the area of the lake is given, some inflow is coming to the lake and some outflow is going out of the lake and some rainfall of certain intensity is occurring in that particular area, we need to calculate the evaporation. And it is also given that any other losses such as infiltration and other losses we have seen, those losses can be neglected. Now, let us start with doing this numerical example. So, what are the data given? Area of the lake is 20 kilometer square, rainfall 1200 millimeters, average inflow 2.7 meter cube per second, then average outflow 3 meter cube per second. So, we need to find out the evaporation. So, imagine the case of a lake, the mass balance equation for a lake can be written as P plus I minus G minus C minus O is equal to delta S. In this we need to calculate the value corresponding to E. Groundwater seepage is not given and storage also not given. So, G and delta S can be neglected. We have been given the value precipitation P is equal to 1.2 meters per year. So, we need to be consistent with the units. So, other quantities which are given also should be converted to meters per year. The value corresponding to inflow is given as 2.7 meter cube per second. So, that need to be converted to meter per year. So, meter cube per second can be converted to meter per year by dividing it by the area of the lake. That is why we have divided it by 20 into 10 to the power of 6. 20 kilometer square is given, it has been converted to 20 meter square by multiplying it with 10 raised to 6 and per second is converted to per year by multiplying these factors. So, I can be calculated as 4.26 meters per year. In the similar way, we need to calculate outflow in the unit of meters per year. Outflow is given as 3 meter cube per second. When we convert it into meter per year, that is by dividing with area and multiplying with the factor conversion factor, we can calculate outflow as 4.73 meters per year. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to substitute these values in our mass balance equation. P plus I together will be our inflow and this can be considered as the losses from the inflow. So, P is given 1.2, I is 4.26 meters per year and O is 4.73 meter per year. So, here G and delta S can be equated to 0 and after substituting these values, we can calculate evaporation from the lake as 0 0.73 meters per year. So, this is very simple example. Similar way, by making use of the mass balance equation, we can calculate any of these values corresponding to infiltration, evaporation, groundwater seepage. Depending on the values given, we can calculate those values. Second example is the water surface elevation above mean sea level in a lake having a surface area of 8 kilometers square is 100 meters 
at a certain time. A precipitation event with a uniform intensity of 10 millimeters per hour occurred during the next 24 hours and the evaporation rate from the lake was calculated to be 0 0.2 millimeters per hour. The average inflow into the lake is at a rate of 25 meter cube per second and the outflow from the lake is at a rate of 28 meter cube per second during this period. The water surface elevation after the cessation of the precipitation event is 100.2 meters. Calculate the groundwater seepage during this period. So, this example is also similar to that of previous example, but what we need to calculate here in this example, we need to calculate the groundwater seepage. So, we can see the data initially, data given are area of the lake is 8 kilometer square as we have done in the previous problem, it has to be converted into meter square. Then we are having the water surface elevation before the occurrence of rainfall, we are having a water surface elevation in the lake 100 meters that we are representing by means of EL1. And then we are having a rainfall of 10 millimeters per hour and it is lasting for 24 hours. Evaporation rate is given to you 0 0.2 mm per hour average inflow 25 meter cube per second and outflow average outflow is 28 meter cube per second. Water surface elevation at the end of once the rainfall is stopped after that what will be the water surface elevation it is given to be 100.2 meters. We need to calculate the groundwater seepage we are having the inflow into the problem into the lake and outflow from the lake. We are having the rainfall which is falling over the lake, rainfall is falling over the entire area, we are considering the lake separately. So, we are having the precipitation p value, then from the lake there is some evaporation taking place. So, evaporation from the lake is given to you that can be represented by E and water surface elevation at the beginning of the rainfall just before the rainfall EL1 is given to you and just after the rainfall once the rainfall is stopped what is the water surface elevation EL2 is also given to you. What we need to calculate during this event, how much is the water which is which has gone as the groundwater seepage. This we need to calculate. Let us start solving the problem. Same mass balance equation for the lake P plus i minus g minus e minus o is equal to delta s. So, here in this case the precipitation is given to you, inflow is given to you, evaporation from the lake is given to you, outflow from the lake is given to you and water surface elevation, difference in water surface elevation is given to you, EL1 and EL2 is there. By taking the difference, we can get how much water is stored in the lake, that can be taken as the storage delta S. Next thing we need to look into is the units. Units for all these processes should be same. So, precipitation is given as 10 millimeters per hour. So, it will be 0 0.24 meters per day. Now, coming to evaporation rate E is given to be 0 0.2 millimeters per hour E is equal to 0 0.0048 meter per day. Now, coming to inflow I is given to be 25 meter cube per second that again we are converting into meters per day. 25 into 60 into 60 into 24 divided by area of the lake. That value can be calculated as 0 0.27 meters per 
day. Now outflow value, outflow value was around 28 meter cube per second that can be calculated as 0 0.302 meters per day. Now additional data which are given are water surface elevation, water surface elevation at the beginning of the rainfall before starting the rainfall and after stopping the rainfall is given to you. So, water surface elevation EL1 is 100 meters, EL2 is 100.2. So, we can calculate the storage, change in storage by subtracting these two water surface elevations. So, the increase in water surface elevation due to rainfall can be taken as delta S that is EL2 minus EL1. It will be coming out to be 0 0.2 meters. Now we are going to make use of our mass balance equation. We just have to calculate the value corresponding to groundwater seepage G. So, G is given by P plus I minus E minus O minus delta S. So, we will substitute the values corresponding to these P, I, E, O, delta S this will be coming out to be 0 0.0022 meters per day. We can convert it into millimeters that will be coming out to be 2.2 millimeters per day. So, when you look at this particular problem, you can see the final uh, after doing the mass balance that is after making use of the mass balance equation, we got the groundwater seepage to be 2.2 millimeters per day. 24 hours we were having rainfall, before the rainfall and after the rainfall. How much is the water levels are given to you? We have cal calculated the water level difference that is taken as the change in storage and we could calculate the seepage from the lake. So, in the similar way different different types of problems can be there. That is sometimes we will be making use of some water from the lake for irrigation purposes or satisfying some demands. So, that can be taken as the loss from the particular lake that is we are withdrawing water from there. So, this can be subtracted. Sometimes some extra inflow will be coming. So, that way some changes or modifications have to be done in the formula depending upon the data given to you. Here I am winding up this lecture. Thank you.